The second aspect of the book, which I know you're very passionate about, is the role of the UK and Canadian forces in Normandy. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I think if we look at the historiography of the battle for Normandy, I think pretty much from from the first instance, as the battle is being fought, there is um, a perceived, um, there is a perception that the Americans are gaining the ground in the west, whereas the Commonwealth forces who are fighting on the eastern side uh, of the campaign are being bogged down into a battle of attrition, almost stalemate. Um, this was the the Allied strategy was to draw the majority of the German forces entering the battle to the eastern side so that the Americans may manoeuvre more freely in the west. So if you're up against seven armoured divisions on the eastern side, uh, whereas one armoured division has been deployed on the western side, it's, it's obvious you know that those forces to the west will be gaining more ground, not necessarily tying down more of the enemy forces and destroying the enemy forces um, but certainly at face value it seems like the Americans are getting the results whereas uh, the British and Canadian forces fighting to the east are getting bogged down and not performing to the same level as the Americans are further west. Sure and I, I know there's been a, um, some you know, perception that the, certainly the, the role of Montgomery and his forces has been, has, has, has been undervalued yeah, very much so. And I think that is, as I mentioned, you know, that is as a consequence of the media portrayal at the time. But we couldn't exonerate the British and Canadian forces fighting to the east because that would give away to the enemy the strategy uh, that was, was being put in place. But unfortunately, with its roots very much during the battle, it is a, a misconception which has just snowballed. It, it really has to the extent where... Nobody seems to be interested in looking at the battle diaries, the strategy, you know, the planning, um, the memoirs even, which um, explains the way that the, the Allies wanted the battle to, to progress. Uh, and I feel there's, as a consequence of that, there has been a great injustice, I yeah. think. Um, whereas uh, the Battle for Khan, the largest battle uh, on the eastern side, is pretty much 95% of the time being portrayed as a failure. Uh, whereas the British and Canadian forces um, failed to advance and would only eventually advance as the uh, Americans were doing so in the West. It's simply not the case. It's no. the, the advance in the West was only made possible through the tying down and the writing off of the enemy forces to the East. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I thoroughly enjoyed reading reading the book and reading your, your accounts, and I... I, I I wonder, and this may be my, <laughs> my out-of-the-box thought, I may be wondering whether the uh, publishers and TV producers maybe pander a little to the US market if they've got to sell books over there. I, you know, I just Massively, I think, you know, I think that is, is very true. Um, I think this is as a consequence of that preconception. Um, if we look at the Hollywood industry, you know, if you look at the films which have been released telling the story uh, of D-Day and the Battle for Normandy, Quite often I do believe that these films are almost regarded as pseudo-documentaries, you know? <laughs> whereas if you look at the motivation uh, of the Hollywood film industry, it's to sell history, it's to sell, yeah. put bums on seats in cinemas and, and to sell that history. And unfortunately I do believe that this particular perspective has really become ingrained. You know, there's that yeah. saying that if you say something that is not true, often enough it becomes the truth. And I do believe that in the case of the Battle for Normandy, it is time that the the strategy is reassessed and sure. uh, we look at it from a more sort of robust way in, in terms of looking at the integrity of the history rather than yeah. uh, in terms of what sells, basically. And it's certainly true, you know, if you look at the best-selling books on D-Day, you look at... Um, I think the worst culprit is, of course, Stephen Ambrose uh, in America, but we've got our own um, historians here in Britain who are clearly looking at, at revenue. They're clearly looking at selling books, enforcing preconceptions, sure. not being controversial, not wanting to upset a large market, 
uh, and basically, to put it bluntly, telling people what they want to hear and yeah. not necessarily telling people the way it was.